Can anyone explain to me what the photography project is? The photography project is about the development of photography, specifically the development of film on the 35 millimeter camera. The project will go through the process of creating an image, from the time the picture is taken to its development and also how the camera works. That's very good everyone, but please stop talking over each other. It will go over the chemicals used to create the image, along with the long history of photography. This project will cover everything that we have learned so far this year, such as polyatomic ions, balancing equations, types of reactions, and covalent bonding, and ionic bonding. Enough! Thank you all for explaining, but you all need to stop yelling. The story of photography can be traced back hundreds of years, going back as far as 2,000 years ago, when the camera obscura was invented. The camera obscura was a dark room that had a small hole in it where images of objects outside the dark room would be displayed on the opposite wall inside the room. However, the first production of permanent images was created by Nikifor Nisepi, a French inventor who was in interested in lithography in, in the early 1800s. Lithography is the process of creating a picture on a flat and blank plane where moisture would repel lithographic ink and would then be pressed hard to create an image. While experimenting with lithography, Nisepi creates a new method for creating an image using lithography, calling it heliography. The method called for a person to coat a pewter plate with a light-sensitive bitumen of Judah, a naturally occurring asphalt, and expose it to light for several hours. Once the plate had been exposed to light, it would be washed and removed to get rid of unexposed parts of the picture, thus leaving an image that was etched into metal. While using the heliograph method, Nisepi created one of his most successful images, a portrait of Roman Catholic Cardinal de Ambus in 1826. This is when he displayed his image to the Royal Society in London, England in 1827. As Nisepi was getting older, he passed down his methods to Louis Jacques Madi Dacry, where he creates the daguerreotype, a new way for a permanent image to be produced in a significantly less time than before, only taking around 3 to 15 minutes to be exposed. The process called for a person to use a sheet of copper to be plated with a thin coat of silver, then polished and exposed to iodine, light, and lastly submerged in salt. Around the same time, another man named William Henry Fox Talbot started to experiment with images. During his experimenting in 1841, he patented the calotype or taliotype, a paper negative process. This process reduced the experiment time for an image to be created, and also helped in creating a faster reproduced image. The process involved a sheet of ionized writing paper by adding solutions of silver nitrate and potassium iodide to the paper surface under light. Then they would wash and dry the paper. They would then sensitize the same surface using a gallonitrate of silver solution. They would then dry the paper and load it into a camera obscura and then expose it to light. They would then remove the paper and brush it with the same sensitizing solution to develop the image to the desired amount. They would then rinse the negative with water, wash it with a solution of potassium bromide, and rinse it again before laying it out to dry. William Henry Fox Talbot would, would later change this fixing solution to hyposulfite of soda. In 1851, Frederick Scott Archer introduced the wet cold down process, where a piece of glass would be situated in a dark room and would be coated with coldine and be made light sensitive with further chemicals. Before the plate could dry, it would be placed in the camera and exposed. The plate would be placed in the dark room to be developed. The process of the glass being developed was the plate being rinsed, fixed, washed, dried, and varnished. In 1888, George Eatman marked the Kodak number one box, making it easier for average citizens with no prior knowledge of taking photos being able to take them. These cameras had a roll of film inside, the, inside once the film was used customers would have their film developed, thus creating a personal photo. In France, the Lear brothers introduced the autochrome color process. The process of creating autochromes was made by coating a, 
a glass plate with varnish and dusting it with a layer of translucent potato starch grains. The grains were dyed a multitude of colors and had a black carbon uh, dust added to it. The plates were next coated with a light sensitive gelatin silver bromide or silver iodine emulsion. When the plate was inserted into a camera, the light from the lens passed through the colored starch grains, which acted as a color filter before reaching the emulsion. After exposure, the plate was processed to make a unique full color positive silver image. In 1925, the Lasai One became the first commercially successful 35mm camera being used by amateurs and famous photographers. In 1935, Kodak introduced Kodachrome, the first color transparency film and the first successful mass marketed color film, being available in 8, 16, and 35mm film. In 1947, Edwin Land introduced the first Insta camera, the Polaroid Land Camera Model 95, which produced prints in approximately 60 seconds. The camera gained mass popularity because of its ability to produce a photo in almost instantly. In 1975, Steven Sasson, an engineer at Kodak, developed the first digital camera, opening the door for a new medium of creating photography, one that does not involve the need for film and does not require as much time to produce. Images were recorded on a memory card where when a photo was taken, the light coming in through the lens of the camera would strike an image sensor. The signal output by the image sensor would then be produced within the camera to create an image data that would then be stored on the memory card. By the 2000s, digital cameras outpaced film cameras and became the new dominant photography medium for people to take photos. By the time companies such as Kodak started to go under because of the lack of demand for film cameras. By the 2010s, cameras are now available on portable cellular phones, allowing for photos to be taken anywhere at any time. This also allowed for cameras on phones to have much larger storage than their other counterparts. During this time, social media starts to be a large part of the world's culture and photos become the epicenter of major social media platforms such as Instagram, Snapchat, and Facebook. discussing how the 35 millimeter camera works. For starters, the 35 millimeter camera is first loaded up with a roll of film, usually containing between 28 to 36 possible photos. The film that is used is, is a plastic coated film that, that has a gelatin motion mixture containing light sensitive silver hide crystals. The gelatin acting as protective layer and the silver hide crystals acting as what is going to be exposed to create the image. There are several components that make up the 35mm camera. First is the lens. The lens is a sheet of glass and plastic at the front of the camera that also allows light to be directed inside of it. Next comes the aperture. The aperture is a small opening in the lens whose size can be adjusted to manage how much light a person wants to come into the camera. The shutter is, is a structure of the camera that contains a series of flasks that open and close at a fraction of a second to allow sets of light into the camera to expose the film. The shutter speed can affect the overall photo. The faster the shutter speed, the crisper the image. The film compartment is where the film in the camera is set to be prepared for the image to be taken. The film is laid flat in the, at the end of the camera directly across from the shutter. The viewfinder is a small area of the camera where a person can see the image that they are going to take. The image can be seen via a mirror that, that light bounces off from and hits a prism that directs the light toward the viewfinder. When a photo is taken, the light that bounces off the person or object that you are taking enters the lens of the camera. The light then passes through the aperture, which then allows the light to further enter the body of the camera. The light then bounces off the mirror inside the camera and reflects off the prism and points the image to the viewfinder compartment. Once a person clicks the shutter down after seeing the desired image, the mirror then raises 
and the shutter opens, allowing light to pass through the lens and aperture and hit the film at the back of the camera. This creates an image on the film upside down to what the person is taking a photo was seeing through the viewfinder. The film is then moved due to a mortar, which, which then adds a new section of film waiting to be exposed. Thank you.